beat the Buffalo Bills, but it's a win, and that's all that matters. Uh, the Bears are now 5-3, and three, and it was actually a quite reassuring victory for me. It was sloppy a lot in a lot of aspects. There's a balance now with the offense, with both the, the passing game and the run game. Um, it was pretty much equal in play calling, and it was quite reassuring. One of the positives was the play of Jay Cutler. Um, ever since coming off his concussion, he has he hasn't been the best. He had a pair of duds against Seattle and Washington, and he had he had a lot of success. And I was very pleased to see that Mike Martz started rolling Cutler out of the pocket, and he had some. He was the team's leading rusher um, in that game. I'm pretty sure um, he had I think about 40 yards rushing. Um, I mean, I mean, he you, he showed the type of quarterback that the Bears had seen and that they wanted. He's very he's a mobile quarterback. He has more success outside of the pocket than in it, and it was very nice to finally see Mike Martz, you know, utilizing that. Um, they're gonna need to do that against Minnesota. I mean, you play up to your quarterback strengths, and they did a very good job of that. Um, this is coming against a defense that had one interception all season and didn't have quite a pass a pass rush, but you know the offensive line held up quite well. Um, is, and rolling Cutler out certainly helps. And, I mean, I think this is good for Cutler's confidence to get a win like this and to finally see the offense be able to succeed in both the passing and running game. I mean, that kind of shows Mike Martz, you know, hey, you can still run the football and have success in the passing game. And actually it helps more. So hopefully let's get the trend of this going and not just be one game. They need to keep this up consistently. It's working for them. And hopefully Martz doesn't stray from this against Minnesota. One of the things that has gone, you know, pretty much under the radar this season has been the Bears secondary. Um, they have been, the secondary has been a concern. Um, not as big a concern. It's kind of been you know, overshadowed by the Bears offensive line and the offense as a whole, basically. But their secondary has, you know, struggled a little bit. They struggled against Buffalo as well, but they made plays when they needed to make plays, like Tim Jennings um, picking off Ryan Fitzpatrick um, about, you know, midway through the fourth quarter, um, gave the Bears offense the ball back, and, you know, they went down and scored, and the defense was able to hold the Bills off and win that game. Um, so, you know, people... Like Jennings and DJ Moore, these young guys are, you know, really making plays for the Bears. In the secondary, though, the secondary is still struggling, and that remains the weakness of the defense, in my opinion. What can you say about this offensive line, who allowed 31 sacks in the, before the bye week in those first um, seven games? Um, here's an interesting stat that you guys might know. They allowed just one sack on Sunday against the Bills. And, you know, it was, it was quite interesting. I mean, I felt like you don't really think about it anymore. You just think it happens. So I basically just thought in the back of my mind that Cutler had been sacked three or four times already. And then he was sacked, and they're like, this is the first sack. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Wow, that's, that's progress. Of course, going up against a Bills team that does not have a pass rush, you know, it might not look all impressive. But, I mean, getting continuity on that line, having Roberto Garza back, and Frank Omiel has been doing a solid job at left tackle in, in comparison to Chris Williams this season. Um, the Lions still has a lot of work to do and a lot of improvement, but this is progress, and we'll take progress with this line. Sticking with the offense, they converted 7 of 12 third downs um, in that game against the Bills. That is progress. Um, they, For a team that wasn't able to convert a third down for about three games, um, Converting more than half is very, very impressive. And uh, also impressive was they finally, finally scored from the one-yard line on offense. They were 0 for 10 um, in the past, and they are now 1 for 11 when Chester Taylor ran it in. You know, it's little things like this. They're, they're small steps, um, but you got to take them where they come. You know, I mean, where you see improvement, you got you got to acknowledge that, and you got to be able to build off that. And I think this, that game, it could be a building, a building block. What can you say about Israel Adonisha? He returned home to Canada. He was from Nigeria. He was born in Nigeria, but he basically you know, grew up in Canada. He had a great game. And then Julius Peppers blocked an extra point, which, you know, could have, that was definitely a deciding factor in the game. Um, Israel has blocked uh, several, several extra points in recent years, and he's quietly having perhaps maybe a Pro Bowl season. Um, you never know in this NFC North. He is... He's been a great compliment to Julius Peppers, who has also been a beast this season. He is just all over that field. He's not getting production in sacks, but you can see he's disrupting 
that offensive line. You've seen him cause false starts. You've seen him like put pressure on the quarterback, though he's not getting sacks. But the pair of him and Adonje, I, I'm liking that a lot. And going up, going up against the Vikings on Sunday, um, you know, if they can, you know, turn that pressure into sacks and be able to sack Favre or even pressure Favre, I mean, that's when Favre is at his worst, and that's when he will commit mistakes and that breed turnovers for him. Going into this Vikings game, basically no one is giving the Bears a chance. Again, this is going to begin a rough five-day stretch with two games, um, the Vikings on Sunday and taking on the Miami Dolphins in Miami on Thursday Night Football. It's, I mean, they need to win at least one. I would think they. it's possible that they could win both because the Vikings are, you know, they're not, what Brett, they're not what Brett Favre thought they were going into the beginning of the season. Um, they're at home. This could be a big statement game. They are undefeated currently in the, in the division, so this game is going to be big for them. They need to win this game. They need to win the Vikings game more than they need to win the Dolphins game. It would be nice for them to win the Dolphins game, who Miami is currently winless at home, and they based, then they just benched their starting quarterback, Chad Henney, in favor of Chad Pennington, who does not have quite the arm, so you know he ain't going to beat you through the air. So that Miami game, I think the Vikings game is more is the more stressed game. Obviously, it's a division game. Bears need this win. And this could ultimately put Minnesota out of the division hunt, which, you know, I think the Packers would be grateful for that too, but we don't care about the Packers. We care about ourselves. The thing is, no one is giving the Bears a chance in this game. Um, I think Julius Peppers is going to, I just have a feeling he's going to have a great game against Brett Favre. Um, it's, I mean, I think the defense can get after them. You know, you can, I mean, rightfully so, to be worried about the offensive line going into this game for the Bears. You know, they haven't been as solid, and you have someone like Jared Allen coming at you. That's always a threat. But, I mean, I think the Bears' offense, it's not going to be a high-scoring game. I, I think the offense will do just enough, and hopefully, and I don't think Cutler will make the mistakes that he has in the past. I think he's beginning to learn from that. And I think the defense is going to have a great game against Brett Favre. Um, I think that... I mean, this is the last time Brett Favre, well, you never know with Favre. I mean, he probably is not his last season. But uh, supposedly, this is Brett Favre's last trip to Chicago. Um, so let's make it one to remember, and maybe he won't get to finish the rest of the season if the Bears have anything to say about it, which they should. I'm going to go, I'm probably the only one who's going to go with the Bears to win this game. It's at home. This is, they need to win this game. And as long as the Vikings still have Brad Childress coaching them, there's, I mean, it gives the Bears a greater chance to win because he is just a cancer in that locker room. But yeah, I'm going to predict the Bears to win 24-14. Uh, to 14. Um, I think the defense is going to give up, up a couple of scores, but that's going to be late in the game when they're rallying. Um, but I think the offense will score just enough and the defense will be able to limit Favre just enough to be able to beat them. And then they're going to go into uh, Miami on Thursday, which I'll be at. It's going to be a very great game. I'm so excited. And... You know, I, I think, well, this will be next week, but I th definitely think that they can beat the beat the Dolphins. I mean, there's not a good vibe down here in Florida um, now that, you know, that they're 4-4, four and four and um, it's not feeling good, but I think, especially being winless, that they can beat the, the Dolphins, no problem. Um, so, yeah, I'm, pretty, I'm going with the Bears to win. They need to win on Sunday against the Vikings. This is a statement game for them right now. This is, both teams need to win this game, so... It's a matter of who wants to win this more, and hopefully that'll be the Bears. This has been Alyssa with Bears Bits. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the game. Bear down. We need this one.